Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, for holding this hearing and uh, look forward to working with you uh, toward uh, our mutual objectives of protecting the homeland and uh, strengthening uh, America's influence uh, abroad. I'd also like to thank the witnesses for their testimony. Uh, let me also publicly thank the FBI, Joint Terrorism Task Force, the Department of Homeland Security, and state and local officials for their efforts in apprehending a suspect in the Boston Marathon bombing. Their efforts exemplify the type of collaboration that we envision when state, local, and federal agencies work effectively together. On Monday, as the Chairman had mentioned, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police announced that they, along with the FBI and Department of Homeland Security, disrupted a terrorist plot to attack a commuter train that runs from Toronto through the northern border at Niagara Falls into New York City. The individual's charge allegedly received support from al-Qaeda in Iran. Now, some were surprised that al-Qaeda had a presence in Iran. Al-Qaeda is a Sunni organization in a Shia-majority country. But we should remember that when the Taliban was defeated in 2001 uh, in Afghanistan, many of bin Laden's family members and top lieutenants had self-exiled to Iran. I commend the work of the Canadian and United States intelligence and law enforcement agencies for successfully thwarting this attack on our nation. I believe it is the duty of this subcommittee uh, to examine threats from al-Qaeda in Iran, and I've talked to the chairman about the possibility of holding a hearing on the al-Qaeda presence in Iran and any threat it poses to the United States. According to Secretary of State Kerry, Iran is moving closer and closer to processing nuclear, uh, nuclear weapon, nuclear proliferation in Iran. Syria and North Korea should encourage us uh, that we need to be prepared for an attack here in the United States. We have been fortunate that a chemical, biological, or radiological, or nuclear attack has never come to fruition here in our country. In 2008, the Commission on the Prevention of Weapons of Mass Destruction, Proliferation, and Terrorism produced a report entitled World at Risk. According to that report, the Commission told us that they believe a terrorist attack would occur somewhere in the world by 2013 and that is more likely to be an active biological terrorism. It is now 2013 and we recognize the possibility of a chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear attack from both foreign and domestic actors. However, recognizing an attack does not uh, equal being prepared for one. Uh, the Weapons of Mass Destruction Commission concluded that the best strategy for biodefense was improving the ability to respond. Last Congress, uh, uh, last Congress, this committee held a hearing on the threat from chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear weapons. During those hearings, uh, our witness, uh, Dr. Leonard Cole, who's with us today, stated that the response uh, plans and exercises fall short of optimal levels and planning that realistically incorporates federal, state, local, and private sector resources uh, into a unified WMD response is largely absent. In order to successfully prepare for this kind of attack, we must alter policy and ensure the first responders have the resources that are necessary to be effective. The first responder grant programs are important uh, to preparedness and should be provided at adequate levels. As we saw in Boston, uh, the actions of first responders were critical. Uh, their actions uh, were necessary in preventing a catastrophic loss of life in the wake of a chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear attack. I understand that today's testimony will highlight uh, a Department of Homeland Security program that is designed to prevent these kinds of attacks in two cities that are facing the highest risks. Uh, those cities are New York City and Los Angeles. I know that these cities are vulnerable and uh, depend on first responders. I particularly know that New York City does uh, because first responders uh, from the Buffalo Niagara region have assisted them in the wake of the horrific 9-11 attacks and the devastation from uh, Hurricane Sandy. We know that uh, these uh, attacks uh, could happen anywhere. And knowing this, uh, there should be an incentive to properly fund first responders uh, consistently uh, answering the call uh, when our nation is in need. Along with readiness, information sharing among uh, federal, state, and local officials must be strong when it comes to intelligence involving potential chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear attacks. 
this Congress, uh, in this Congress, I'm an original co-sponsor of H.R. 1542, which strengthens intelligence and information sharing about weapons of mass destruction. It is my hope that this bipartisan legislation will be voted on favorably uh, by this committee. This legislation is a step in the right direction, but there is still much work to be done. First responders in all areas of risk need to be fully capable and equipped to handle an attack. This means that full funding of state and local grant programs by the federal government, and this includes the Urban Area Security Initiative. I will be uh, introducing uh, or reintroducing legislation to once again provide funding opportunities for communities like Buffalo in Niagara Falls under this program, which were senselessly uh, cut from funding. Additionally, coordination needs to be improved among all, all officials at the federal, state, and local level to have a response that is expedient, efficient, and effective. I look forward to the witness testimony today, and uh, I thank you for uh, being here.